Good morning, everybody. Well, this is going to be, uh, I'm going to try something totally and completely different here. Um, I just, I just decided to go ahead and do this on a whim. I couldn't really think of a game or anything that I wanted to stream. Uh, orig originally, it was going to be, um, originally it was going to be pinball, but the new content doesn't drop until like a few hours from now, so I'll just go ahead and wait till tomorrow on that. Um, yeah. I also, uh, I also downloaded a game called, uh, called Crypt of the Necro Dancer. It seemed like an interesting game. It was, uh, it's centered around, uh, it's a rhythm-based game. It's basically a dungeon crawl, but, uh, it's, you have to move to the rhythm, rhythm of the beat. Problem is, is the game, uh, there is the music on there really fucking sucks. It's, uh, a lot of techno, dubstep, auto-tune. Um, I didn't, there's a whole bunch of DLC that I made the mistake of buying. I don't, I think I tried listening to some of it, but it still sounded like, like you can't, I don't think you can like make your very own custom music or I don't think I could, I could go on YouTube and like put on, put on the Eagles greatest hits, for example. I couldn't, I couldn't use anything like that. I'd probably get flagged for copyright. So, so that game just went. So, uh, and I was going to try uh, Path of Exile, but I'd just be running maps. Nothing real groundbreaking there. Uh, I also thought about um, I thought about streaming Torchlight 2, but I'll probably spend most of my... I'll be spending just as much time uh, fiddling with the cheat console as I would uh, actually playing it. So, that idea went out the window. So, so then it just kind of occurred to me that recently... I started reading a book called Level Up, the um, the guide to video game design, and why the hell is my camcorder doing that? But it's uh, by a guy named Scott Rogers. Uh, I guess he's a grizzled old vet when it comes to designing games. And what are the what are the methods? Um, uh, first, let me um. I also just downloaded this. It's called Scribner. It's um the problem. Normally I would use either WordPad or Notepad, but the problem is, is uh, it's a, it's a bright white screen, and it it looks pretty looks pretty tacky on my webcam. Like I'm just bathed in white light, so I needed. But you can't change the background on those. Whereas on Scrivener here, you can. But like I said, I'm going to AFK a minute or two. I'm going to go get me up something to drink real fast. I'll be back. I'm gonna have me a protein shake. Um, as of as of recently, I started lifting weights, so I gotta drink a I gotta drink a. Originally, I was drinking two of these, but the problem is, is uh, oh, lost my train of thought. But, but problem is, is uh, I'm I'm hearing bodybuilders saying you need to consume uh, protein equal to one gram per pound of body weight you have. I weigh 155 pounds, so I'm I have a very hard time. So I have a very hard time having to drink uh, 155 grams of protein. Seems like an awful lot. So because of that, originally I was drinking two. Uh, I figured it's maybe on my days off I'll go ahead and I'll uh, have a third one. So and um, another brain fart here. I. I forgot I'm still in the middle of setting up. So, let me go ahead and get that going. And whoops, forgot I turned off my tablet. 
Well, I am all kinds of messing up right now. Here we go. There we go. Let's say if my tablet's going to continue being difficult, I'm going to have to grab my cell phone. Come on, Wi-Fi. Come on. Okay, but in this book I'm reading, um, what about what are the things in here? It's called the uh, it's called the uh, ten-page document. It's ten pages of uh, what your video game does. So um, I thought I'd just go ahead and uh. Like I said, since I can't, couldn't really think of anything else to stream, I thought I'd uh, do something totally different then and stream this instead. Scroll, please. Ah, uh, is Final Fantasy back up? I didn't think it was going to kick in to like 4.30ish. Which was another reason why I'm, um... Yeah, I'm... I'm kind of... I'm kind of trailing off here. I'm trying to be in two different places at once. Okay, let me get this chat box up. Come on. Come on. There you go. Now, let me uh, go ahead and test it and make sure it's actually working. Long five second delay. Yeah, nice. Okay, so, so let me get on them. But what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and uh. No, I already, I've already committed this to all Paul. There, there was also a, there's also a one page, a, a one page that I was supposed to have done, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I'm just gonna go ahead, and, well, take the poor play as rendered, if, if you understand the reference. But. says in here Great major 3 is a magic number Okay so I guess the methodology behind this is what I'm Page one. Wish I could see my cursor. But, um.
wish I could see my cursor. comment background I don't know if you guys can see this uh, pop-up menu or not nope you can't so I already see a bit of a problem with this then you guys can't see the the pop-ups and drop-downs I'm using There we go. Got it. Okay, that's going to help a lot. All right. So. All right, page one. Page one is supposed to be the game title. Which I'm going to call. I'm going to call the Dungeon Crawl. Well, let me, um. This text here, I'll drop down to 24. The font size, the 24. And I don't, I don't know how to set the margins or anything, but I'll, I'll try to remember that. I don't want my text going too far over to the right, otherwise uh, it's gonna end up underneath my webcam, possibly my chat box as well. And let me highlight this, underline it, um, intended game systems. Ultimately, ultimately any, but I actually had consoles especially play In mind. Um, no, I'm gonna assume Control S will save it. All right, I'm gonna choose Save As. It's going in my documents. The Dungeon Crawl, Scrivener. Alright, so, takes care of that. Uh, target age of players. This is going to be a tricky one with me. And let me, um, I'm going to go up here to Tools. I'm going to look for something that has, um, uh, hotkeys. Because it is going to really help a lot if I could just um, use a hotkey for underlining and bolding and whatnot.
don't know if you guys can see this or not. Nope. <sighs> One big drawback to using this. Again, I've said it before. I'll go ahead and say it again. You guys can't see the uh, drop downs or pop ups I'm using. Uh, a video game called RP. Excuse me. A video game called RPG Maker had the same problem. So far, I'm not finding bold or underline or anything. There it is. Okay, control B is for bold. So I guess one would assume that uh, control U would be underline. Control I is for italic. So yeah, one won't assume that, uh, yep, control U, underline. So next one is going to be age of players. Target age of players. Um, this is going to be a very difficult one because uh, I think uh, people of any age should be able to play my games, even if they're gross, sick, or disgusting. You know, and I'm, I'm me like a lot of other people out there. You don't have to talk down to kids. You don't. You know. You don't. You don't have to go or anything like that. So, I think, uh, I, I mean, I've seen my share of kids that were just just, just as mature, if not more so, than some, some adults. So, uh, oh, God, there's, I'm going to say right now, any. There's going to be some gross stuff. There's probably going to be dis some disturbing stuff in the game. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna branch off here a moment. Let me um, let me save it. Uh, I'm on the appearance screen right now. Try to give kind of a kind of a chalkboard look here. And it doesn't And it doesn't look like um I'm being whited out or anything, so I'll go ahead and keep it like this. I kinda like this. Again, kinda gives it a gives it a chalkboard look. Um, 
rated M for mature. Again, I'm not. I I think uh, I think uh, an eight-year-old child can be just as mature, if not more so, than a freaking adult. So it, I, I'm not a. I know a. There, I know a. I mean, I played a. I mean, I played, I played mature games with kids before. You know, back when I was babysitting them, and you know, but they're just fine. I mean, they weren't. They weren't any more nuttier than they already were. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Control U. Intended ESRB rating. Um, see above. Save it. Okay. <laughs> Projected ship date, um... All right, that's uh, page one. So now the possibly arduous task of trying to create page two. Now I gotta figure out how to do that. Hey, I got a quirky board. So now I got to now I got to figure out how to make a page too. I gotta fight with the pawn here. Okay, now we'll knock it back. Knock it down to 24. The, the font size, I mean. All right, so this one here is going to be a pretty long one. Uh, page two is going to be the game outline. So, so what I'll go ahead and do here. All right, game story. Uh, set. And I 
I'll just call it Floaty Bill. Said in Floaty Bill. some of this here real quick. Use your Okay. So basically I'm I am only to just make a quick outline of this. So set in floaty bill. Floating city that broke off from the war torn from the war torn we'll just call it warland. Another placeholder title. And I guess kind of a side note, I'm not gonna, when it comes to naming these, I don't want to do Elwanar, or you know, some grandiose medieval sounding sounding name. I don't, I don't want, I don't want Britain the Elder, you know, or, you know, Palvanos, or you know, some, something that sounds, sounds real pretty. You know, I don't, you know, I, I guess, I guess you can call the floating city float land or something. You know, yeah, I don't, I don't do, I don't do fancy. So, I mean, and when it, but this is something that I can, this is something that I can flesh out later on. But like I said, as far as the names go, I just want to keep them simple. Utopian in viral man. and an environment Utopian environment. That's supposed to be capitalized. Okay, environmentally. That's a tough one to spell. Gotta be a right word for this. Um, by an anticipated evil, for lack of a better word, by an an anticipated evil, complacency. I'm what, um. I'm one of those that thinks that no political system is perfect. You know, you got, you know, you got your, you got your military-based civilizations where you have a tyrannical dictator that, um, kind of like Nazi Germany. I mean, let me check the mic real quick. Okay, mic still works. And it looks like I'm going, I'm going way over here. Let me set the margins. Okay, 
adds a list. Um, I need to know how to set the margins. Because this is going way underneath the... Okay. Yeah, because it's going way under. Uh, file, edit, view. Outline, collections. Alright, I'm in the edit. I'm in the upper left corner right now. I'm trying to find the uh, margins option. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to shorten them up. Set up. There we go. Let me try this. Okay, cancel that. Text color, highlight color, spelling, font, writing tools. Um, sorry for the interruption, but like I said, um, the, the text is uh, spilling over underneath my webcam. Otherwise, the only other place I could think of. We're probably down there. I'll do the same thing with this as well. Yeah, but even that's going to create an issue. Let me think, let me think, let me think. So let me go on. Stop. Okay, a little too far over. Let me slide it back a little bit. I guess this is going to have to do right here. Okay, so back to the task at hand. Okay, once again, uh, Utopian environmentally clean city that has been beset by an unanticipated evil complacency. Again, I'm one of, going back to what I was saying earlier, I'm one of those that I believe, I'm a firm believer that no political system is perfect. There's always going to be drawbacks. Uh, you could have a place like Nazi Germany. You know, Jews were persecuted. You know, a tyrannical dictator. Boy, were they... Well, boy, do they sure kick ass and take names on the military front, though. <sighs> Just steamroll through countries and whatnot. So, 
they sure kicked ass up. They, they sure kicked ass militarily. But, uh, we're very good on the home front. I mean, you know, this here could be the uh, flip side. You know, the sky is blue, the grass is green, everything's pretty, trees everywhere. You know, everybody loves each other. You know, nothing but group of, you know, hippies and group hogs and all, all that kind of thing. But on the downside, there's no conflict. You know, this is going to be especially true amongst the, uh, here, let me, uh, especially amongst the young people. Okay, so this is, uh, is it just me or is this thing automatically indenting the paragraphs? Oh, and, uh, I forgot to mention at the start of the stream, too, this is my very first time using Scribner. So far, I like it. But, like I said, it, one huge drawback to this is, uh, none of your viewers can see the see any pop-ups or see any drop-down menus I'm using. I really wish you could. off and get me some to eat. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so, gotta have me, uh, some peanut butter and crackers, and a Reese's pumpkin, and this I'll go ahead and eat right away before it gets too melted. Drive me up a freaking wall here, too. Alright, I gotta set that to full. Full screen. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to keep hunting for margins. It doesn't seem to affect it on here, though, so I'll have to... Label status open. Move. This ain't helping at all. Or 
Raw map, maybe? Table, list, ruler, raw map. I would think it'd be in here. go. Found it. Okay, there we go. I found it. Okay, but because of this, though, I'm going to have to... God, my cursor is hard to see. And that also means I'm going to have to... Do this. Yeah. Page 2 can stay the way it is. So hopefully you guys can still see that. I think you can. Might have to squint a little bit, but it's there. Like I said, I don't... The way I originally had this where I had the, the window and a little cramped space just so I had my uh, webcam and chat box outside of the workspace. It just wasn't really working. Corruption. Um, actually, no, 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 no. It wouldn't be corruption, it'd be oppression. This was something I learned, uh, I think it was SimCity 3. If you, uh, if you had next to zero crime at all in your city, people would start complaining about police oppression because cops don't have anything else to do. education I think that could be another that could also be another uh, byproduct of complacency god my cursor is super hard to see well, yeah that's another 
that could be another byproduct there. I mean, you know, why, why learn something if you're not going to use it? It's called NUI, E N N U I. Or I don't even need to do that. I'll just I'll just go on my web browser. I forgot it still had it up. I'm gonna look up the word NUI. But I think um I think it means laziness. NUI. Bingo. Causing the very foundation of floaty build to crack. How the hell is it spelled then? Dilemma. D-I-L-E-M-A. I don't know how it's to be spelled. Oh, two M's. Okay. Learn something new every day, Joe. It's up by an unanticipated. I kind of want to play some music, but I also want to export this video to YouTube, too. Okay, and I know the moment I start playing some music, this thing's going to get flagged for copyright, so, no. Very foundation of floating, understanding this dilemma. Um, I don't want to say the ruling class. I would, as far as the governorship goes, I want to say probably probably medieval, like King Arthur, but he also had a round table. The round table council, which you, um, I'm also kind of a believer that. In, a, in any government, you've got to have a leader. You got to have some kind of lead, you got to have some kind of final authority in there, because otherwise, you, you, I mean, having a round table, a round table is great, but you, what that's going to lead to is you're going to have it's just going to lead to a whole bunch of bickering and arguing. You know, you also you have a fair amount of you know a lot of going back and forth, and um, you're also going to have a fair amount of people that you're going to have uh, the undecided group like oh, I don't care whatever works see you're gonna have that as well you know they're not giving any creative input in whatever situation they're facing so you have to have you have to have some kind of leader in there so uh, round table with the head I'm trying to think of some kind of The 
table with <laughs> yep yep another placeholder name Save it. Where I'm in a clean city that has been beset by an anticipated evil. Just reading it over. License of police oppression lacks education. show known as save it so uh, so basically so basically the are let me let me hold let me let me hold it in until I continue on in the in the book here. But I think I have my game outline right here. Okay, game flow. Okay, um, so the game flow. I wonder if there's a way to, wonder if there's a way to get this uh, binder here at the far left side here. I wonder if there's a way to take it off, or at the very least. I 
at the very least hide it because it's it's taking up a good chunk of my space here so I guess um, I'm back up here in the upper left corner on edit Bar, I probably want to leave that in there. Um, binder effects. Nope, that didn't take it off. That was all I had to do. Okay, so I can just simply turn it on and off then. Okay. Big time help right there. Because that means I can slide that over. I can move the, move the margin back out a little bit. It doesn't want to it doesn't want to come out anymore so I'm not gonna fight with it you know so far I am really really liking this Chances are, I might go ahead and start using this on my Final Fantasy XIV blog post. The only thing I need to be able to do is find a way to... Find a way to upload this. Upload it onto something and then transfer that over to... Over to the Lodestone. Good morning, Kataro. Well, I thought I'd do something totally different. What I'm doing right here is, uh, I'm trying to... Um... Yeah, believe it or not, I'm actually starting to burn out on it. I mean... Great until you get to the end game. I did New Game Plus. I did New Game Plus, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, but... That actually kind of... I kind of wore thin after a while. I do plan on playing it again. I just don't know when. <clears throat> and uh, I was going to play pinball, but uh, uh, those uh, new tables, they're not going to drop until a few hours from now. So I figured probably something like that. Better off just doing it tomorrow morning. And I couldn't really think of any other games to play. So I just had a, a huge idea here. I'm trying to design a video game doing the 10 page document I don't know how far I'll get but I found this book here or I found this like a month ago it's called level up uh, it's a guide to designing or it's a guide to designing video games so I'm up I'm following some of the advice on here he has in here what's called a, a 10 page document 10 pages of what your game does Ooh. 
Arkham Asylum. Never played it, but I've I've seen the full beginning to end on and I've seen the full beginning to end on that game. synopsis you know the synopsis objectives um you'll be fighting and then you'll be you'll be doing um, any number of practice runs You'll be doing any number of non-lethal practice runs until ready to take on the real thing. This was something that uh, I've been saying a long time ago too, back when I was playing Diablo 3, and I guess Diablo 2 as well, when they have a hardcore mode, like when once you die, it's all over. Um, I want to, I want to try something like this on this game here. Have a hardcore mode. Like, you only get one chance. When you die, that's it for you. But, I'll, I want to do something different on here where you can kind of, you can kind of do a, a save version. Or, like, a, like I have typed out here, practice runs. Doing the exact, doing exactly what you'll be doing, um, in the actual quest keep practicing this over and over and over until you get it right um have some randomness in there of course but uh, otherwise just to give you an idea as to what you're up against okay
die. But yeah, um, the pinball then, I'll probably just do that tomorrow. This is probably the best I can do for game flow. people uh, rescuing people I mean defeating Nice. No, but what I have in mind here, I think what I have in mind is, uh, <clears throat> I think it's going to be a beat em up, but for a lot of these, you don't you don't have to kill them. You don't have to you don't have to mortalize them or rip their heads off or anything. Sometimes, just simply snapping a guy's arm and half oh, that can be enough to defeat him. You know, or, you know, or sometimes just simply whoosh, hitting them like hitting them on the side of the jaw where there's like a bunch of nerves that go to your brain. Hit them there, smack, plop. You know, just simply. Simply just inducing, you know, inducing unconsciousness can be enough to defeat them. That's something else I want to do differently in this game that I don't see a lot of in a lot of other games. In most other fighting games, you're basically killing them. You know, whereas I don't, I don't really see a whole lot of incapacitation. The only game I can think of would be Metal Gear Solid. Where you don't have to blow them away with bullets. You could just put them to sleep with tranquilizer darts, but otherwise, most other games involve uh, most other games involving killing your targets. Um. Yeah, I think I have a. I've seen Witcher Three like very briefly. It definitely looked like a game that was along the lines of Monster Hunter World. I don't think I'd be able to play it. It would use up all my resources.
in this quest here and something like this here scouting slash prospecting various persons places and things I'm I have archers in mind I have range classes in mind you know rangers hunters that kind of thing they're not they don't just have, they're not just they're not just killers with bows you know they all all they have to do is go go over here and locate such and such person or such and such place all they need to do is find it find it and when they see it return back and report like they don't have to actually go kill anybody so yeah no kidding Secret neighbor. So, practice runs in the training room. Don't need to have that in there now. This is going to be a difficult one right here. Um, if the contestant, for lack of a better word, if he does complete a, if he does complete a dungeon, where does he go? I don't know about returning him back to the normal populace because uh, I would want him to keep everything that went on in that dungeon. I would want him to keep it a secret. So there's kind of a pro wrestling aspect to this. Dark Souls. Yeah, for some reason that game goes over my head. I mean, I don't mind watching it, but as far as playing it, nah. go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and say not sure on this one I'm gonna have to come back to this but again on one end um, as I said before there is a pro wrestling aspect to this um, I don't want I don't want that contestant I don't want that I don't want that hero to come back from running the dungeon into the general populace and like tell them everything that went on in there you know same thing with pro wrestling uh, you don't you know you Wrestlers didn't run around telling her, but yeah, it's all fake. Or at least back in the old school, they kept it secret. I think they have uh, spoken code and stuff. They uh, they kind of had their own little language that outsiders didn't know. But at the same time, I actually would want them coming back, you know, because I'm pretty sure the the fans that are watching this whole thing, you know, they wanna, they probably want to see their hero in the flesh, so. 
So yeah, I'll just this will probably have to take a lot of work on this. Oh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> that guy had a perfect voice for that too. I don't know his name. souvenirs I think uh, if I actually make it that far I'm I might have something to say about the souvenirs part of it but right now I'm on I'm only on page two and I'm just I'm, I just have to describe the game flow But as far as game flow goes, I'll just leave it at that. And save it. Alright, let's see what's next. Alright. Page when it does this. Just keep it on one font. Alright, so page three is about the character or characters. Okay, this is the part where uh, I have to talk about uh, about the characters in my game. So, um, probably gonna have to think about this one here for a little while. Probably say, uh, oh God, I want to say either either you can choose a preset character, or you can go the custom route. But the problem is, is I this is my first time ever creating a game, so I don't know how to implement a custom system. So I'll just say at the moment. I don't want to use an underline in this here because I don't want to I don't want to confuse anybody so I'll just say pugilist I don't want to say weaponless because it's his fists and feet are weapons, so... And 
and um, I don't want to say bare knuck. I don't want to say bare handed or bare knuckled either because uh, he's gonna be wearing goblets. There's my answer. It's in my head. I'm just trying to find it. Excels at brawling. A gauntlet of gladiatorial pit fighter that excels at brawling and breaking bones. Uh, next one. Uh, cannibal. Wait, let me go back up here. Let me let me put a space in there. There we go. That looks better. A wicked huge sword holding. I don't want to say glutton. Nope, nope, nope. Looks like this here, though, it automatically capitalizes words for you. Like if you put down a period and you 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 want to put a space and you type down a word, it'll automatically capitalize the first letter. Okay, uh, with cannibal, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to make here is a, uh, a cannibalistic version of the hunt is more important than the kill. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to make my, I'm trying to structure my sentences in that way.
Especially from a good kill. Okay, third one. So we got the pugilist, we got the cannibal. And um and no, these are not these are not gonna be stock classes. They're not gonna be warrior they're not gonna be warrior, mage, thief, archer. No, that is freaking boring. I I kinda wanna branch off and do something different here. And this one here, because I can't think of any other way to do it. No. I want to have a hunter in there. You know, just like World of Warcraft, he has a pet. And he can train as many pets as he... And uh, he can train any number of other pets. But I want to make this guy an environmentally themed one. Again, I don't want to just make a... I don't want to just make a cold... I don't want to make... Excuse me. I don't want to make an ice cold killer with pets. You know? Now that I think about it, I want to... I'll probably want to change a... Change a thing or two on the pugilist as well. Those are brawling and breaking bones. A very satisfying sound, just like breaking glass. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like it. I've known other people in my life that are like it. They, they love that sound of breaking glass. Just that... <laughs> sounds really cool. But the implication here is uh, this guy, again, he's not hes not just some ice-cold killer that's going to beat his opponents to death. You know, that, this, part, this part here is... You know, he just... Loves that feeling of a bone breaking underneath his fist. That kind of thing. Um, I've heard... I'm thinking oh, there's probably some boxers that are like that too. And I'm sure there's uh, MMA fighters that are like that as well. They they love the feeling of just... Boom. You know, just breaking... You know, somebody's rib breaking underneath their fist. That kind of thing. It's not... It's not out of maliciousness or anything like that. It just... They just love the feeling. They love the sound. And as stated earlier... I want these character classes to be the kind you don't see every day. Again, I'm trying to veer away from the warrior, mage, thief model. Yeah. But again, going back to Hunter, I'm I'm trying to make this guy like a protector of the wilds. Almost druidish. You know, he. I think, um, now that I think about it, uh. Warcraft 3. Either the vanilla or one of those expansions. Oh, I wish I knew his name. Rexar. I think that was like the. That was like the first thing he said, like in the very first cutscene, like. He scarred the land with their war and destruction and such. You know, and that kind of thing. He kind of gets a, you know, he kind of, kind of complains about pollution and corruption and whatnot. 
that'd be the that'd be the kind of honor I'd want to make. Finishing the option to sell their loot boxes. Not a fan of that, and this game most certainly will not have that. Also thinking too, I might roll the um, roll the archer aspects into this guy. I might go ahead and make this guy the um, Dungeons and Dragons equivalent of a ranger. Rangers could do it. I mean, rangers can pretty much do it all as far as, far as the wilderness go, goes. They can they can dual wield weapons. They can uh, they can fire bows. Go ahead and um, as well as a staunch environmentalist. Hunter, he's a master of the outdoors as well as a staunch environmentalist. And uh, as somebody who's watched uh, and as somebody who's watched movies like Food Inc., um, supersize me, supersize me too. Holy chicken, seeing movies like that, I could probably get some pretty good backstory in this guy. I'm just trying to I'm trying to think of something something different than from the evil big corporate pigs that staunch to exploit the exploit the land for their own selfish gain you know there's something like that something tired and old I mean I'd agree with them but you know constantly hearing that gets annoying after a while okay
But like I said, um, Hunter, he's gonna, he's basically gonna be the Dungeons and Dragons version of the Ranger. He ain't just gonna, he ain't just gonna be the guy with the bow. Or he ain't just gonna be the guy with the bow and the pet. I mean, he's gonna be able to do pretty much anything involving the outdoors. He can, he can shoot a bow. He can shoot a bow. Um, as far as shooting a gun goes, I don't know. But, he, you know, he can shoot and he can all, and he can fight when, he can melee fight when necessary. And he, he can also have pets that help him out too, so. And it's, I would think it's also implied here too that, like the pugilist, he's not a cold-blooded killer. He's not going to kill every person that tries to start a bonfire in his forest or something. Just simply chase them off. Same thing here with the pugilist. I mean, dead men can't fight back. So, that being said, I might want to alter this guy's description too. try this. That enjoys and excels at brawling and breaking bones. And as said at the early part of the stream, I'd love to be playing music right now, but I want to be able to export this video to YouTube, and if there's any kind of music on it, I run the risk of this thing getting flagged for copyright, so, no. So, sorry for the silence, but that, that only means, uh, I'm busy turning the gears up here. Sorry, Bl sorry, Blizzard. Can't think of anything else. Next one, he's gonna be a. It's a placeholder name. Spec Ops. I don't. I think. I thought there was a short version of Covert Operative. I'm gonna go on the browser and look that up. Call him a call pop. Uh, placeholder name. So we got the call pop. Uh, spy. 
Spy, assassin. There is, um, in the game, Shogun, Total War. Um, there's a class in there called the, sh called the Shinobi. This is one of the specialties right here. You put him in a, you put him in hostile territory, you put him in a, in an enemy's province, and he'll start, and he'll get the general populace turning against the ruler. Um, this one here. Something else I'm trying to do with all these classes is um make give them a lot more real world applications too. You know, like like the hunter. Not just again, not just not just some killer with a bow, but somebody, you know, he's an environmentalist too. So not all the quests that he's gonna be doing is gonna involve scaring away a bunch of orcs or trying to trying to keep the human army from uh, overrunning his trees with the big siege towers or whatnot. You know, trying to try and destroy trying to destroy them. I mean, a lot of it could also be um guiding people through a thick forest or something. Acting as a forest guide. Um maybe maybe rescuing people that are that are trapped on the side of a mountain or something and they felt you know they you know they they fell down, they're stuck in this mountain. Maybe Maybe this hunter's mission could be to go over there and rescue him. He could be a rescue worker. Uh, maybe a cannibal. You know, a cannibal doesn't just ne necessarily to be a necessarily have to be a another cold-blooded killer that. Eats, his cor eats the corpses afterwards. I mean, um, I can't I can't think of any real world examples at the moment, but I'm pretty sure there's uh, places out there that have next to no food whatsoever. So, in places like that, some of those people are have no choice but to eat each other. Maybe a cannibal can be used. Maybe a cannibal can be used in a situation like this. Who has to go out and you know you gotta gotta starving village, you know, they're all dying of starvation, maybe this cannibal can go over to this tribe over here, especially if it's an evil tribe that's, you know, attacking these villagers or whatnot, can go over you know, slaughter them all bring their corpses back to that tribe and, you know, save that village, that kind of thing so it doesn't cannibal doesn't just have to be some mere kill and eat class
you know, and there, and there could also be a cannibalistic aspect to the hunter. You know, maybe anybody that actually is trying to destroy his land. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it's best one. I'm sure it's best one turned out a good meal. I mean, that's just, you know, you mess with his woods. I mean, you're just going to become food for his animals. I'm sure they'd develop a taste. I'm sure they'd have a taste for human flesh. I'll, I'm probably just going to go ahead and cover, I'll probably cover more of these in depth later on, but I got to keep going on to the next class, which is going to be the Paladin. Is the vanquisher of evil? But he is also I don't want to say healing, and I don't want to, but I don't want to say first aid either. I don't want to say first aid because uh, anybody reading this is probably will probably start envisioning a, a holy paladin clad in uh, clad in heavy armor, a big shield, a mighty mace, and a first aid kit on his hip. You know, so it just didn't look wouldn't look right. go on the browser I'm gonna type down first aid first aid synonyms there we go not many Wounded is not probably the best word. I can, there's probably a better word for that, but I guess I'll go with that. But basically, with this kind of paladin, again, he's not just going to be the he's not going to be 
the murderer with the mace. You know, smites it. He's a smiter of evil, but he goes around it. You know, kills that guy. Kills that guy. Bashes that guy's skull in. And then, you know, casts the whole light. Oh! Until the guy becomes obliterated from the world. You know, no. No, he's... I'm gonna have... He's definitely gonna have a mace. I know in Dungeons and Dragons, clerics are required to have a, are required to have a mace because it uh, doesn't shed blood. But I mean, even then, I mean, you could just smack somebody upside the head with that. It's almost like kissing somebody upside the cranium with an aluminum baseball bat. Ding! I mean, you're still gonna kill him anyway. So, so again, he's not just a murderer with a mace. Um, he's. It's, it's as I type down here, he's also a field medic. He's a field medic. You know, you know, somebody, you know, maybe after he wins a battle, he can go through and check all of his opponents and make sure that they're all right, not, or they're not suffering any permanent injuries. Maybe just making sure that they'll be, you know, making sure they're okay, and then going on to the next adventure. Probably should have checked my book. Chances are I might have done this all wrong. Okay, the book's saying the same thing. Um, if you think the if you think your description is gonna add to the game, go ahead and add it. But if it doesn't, don't. So. Things clandestine. So long as it doesn't violate his personal code. Um, there was a there was an old Shadowrun book back in the nineties called Fields of Fire. Um, it's the guy in there talks about the art of being a mercenary. That was one of the most necessary things a mercenary can have is a personal code. Like, they're not just, again, they're not just a bunch of ice-cold killers, you know, letting their guns speak for them. So, same thing here with this guy. He'll actually refuse to do certain jobs because he doesn't believe in them. Or he thinks uh, the particular job they're asking for it could actually be counterproductive. So... You know, and a, I guess uh, another little quirk on Cannibal, even a can, even this Cannibal here fights with honor. I mean, if you read this part, especially from a good kill, like skill champions and such, meaning he's not just gonna, he's not gonna kill and eat anything that crosses his path. I mean, most of those people aren't even worth, aren't even worth his blade. But if he's fighting an orc champion or whatnot, oh yeah, he's chowing down afterwards. Breakfast of Champions ain't a breakfast cereal. Sometimes it's the opposition. <laughs> Good old David Lee Roth. To the wounded and 
distressed. Okay, so... Um... Mage. And uh, the magician I have in mind is, I guess, is basically going to be a, a magical version of Bill Nye, the science guy, or any of those fun scientists. Like, what? Well, now watch. I'll mix this. I'll mix this with this. Now watch, kids. Whoa! You know that kind of thing. The role of childlike. I gotta figure out what to say on this one. I'm guessing uh, there's also a, I think it's a flash game. It's called Doodle God. It's where, um, it's just, it's just the whole game's all about mixing different elements together and uh, creating different results. So I'll probably have that aspect in here as well. Okay, my still works. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I know what I forgot to do. So part of my text has been covered up. Whoops. Oh, screwed that up. Actually, I could probably widen it a little bit. And um, I'll go ahead and uh, make Cobop the official name. having a hard time putting this one together. Oh, 
Oh, and uh, implication here. Um, if I can find my cursor. God, this thing's hard to find. That he's he's not always going to be using magic. He's not you're not always going to be using holy power to destroy evil or anything like that. I mean, again, I'm, I didn't want to use first aid because the word didn't fit. But again, there's there's a physical aspect to this too. Like he's he's going to be you know dressing wounds. He's going to be stopping the bleeding and you know and so on and so forth. He's not just going to sit there and. No. Cast a healing spell. Boom, your wounds are gone. No. What? You got hit with a, a decapitate spell that took 90% of your health off at once? Oh, here's a healing spell. There you go. You're healed to full. And I kind of have in mind for the for the magician something so, something different other than the than the typical you know book wheel you know book wheel you know the bookish scholar you know serious minded you know research focused guy make him like a Betty White off of the Golden Girls. <laughs> Which I can, which I can kind of see, because I mean, it's all, you know, it's like the joy of science. You know, there's people out there that enjoy it. You know, just using their imagination, putting together different aspects of reality and all that. You know, you no know, creativity, I guess. Okay, this this paragraph here ain't working.
Okay, I'm just gonna move right up. I'm gonna cut it off right there. I could probably keep going all day and all night doing this. So let's. Okay, page four. Which is going to be gameplay. But what I'm what I'm working on here, there's gotta be no health no health points, no magic points, um no actual damage per se. to do this. Uh, no index card. But, um, for those that might have seen my other gameplay or game design videos, um, there was a game called, uh, Dynasty Warriors, the Dynasty Warriors franchise. I don't know if all of them had it, but uh, at least one of them had a mechanic called Vorpal. V-O-R-P-A-L. That's where whenever you, uh, whenever you hit a target, there's a random chance that that hit will instantly kill him. That's what I'm going to have on here. It's basically going to be an RNG.
Yeah, I would be too. Well, they didn't, uh, they didn't get rid of the, uh, the Dragon Fatality on Medieval Madness, did they? I don't think they did. If they, I mean, if they didn't get rid of that Fatality, I can't see them getting rid of the, uh, Shocking Fatality, though. Okay. Doing it again. I have to knock it down to nine and a half. There we go. Yeah, it's got to be a uh, just a hair under a uh, nine and a half. All right, good. Turn that off. Bye. Successful hit does not KO a target. There we go. Um, basically, what it says here, um, if if the successful hit doesn't knock out the target, like say if um if your attack has a a base chance of ten percent to knock out a target, if I hit you, but it doesn't knock you out, and if say if I hit you with a jab, then the then the the, the, the chance to knock you out on the next successful hit increases by, say, 10%. So now my next hit has a 20% chance to knock you out. So that's, that's how I'd want it to work on here. I just remembered I still have to do my uh, Final Fantasy 14 blog post as well and so I basically have about five minutes now to get this to do what I can here after that I got to shut her down and get going on that because I still have to get that entered as well I couldn't do it last night because uh, the game is undergoing maintenance so and the KO chance increase depending on the attack used
Wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow, French hour. Yeah, I imagine. Okay, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and um First off, all right, I'll just I'll just do it here. All right, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and shut her down. Like I said, I got um, I still have to do my uh, Final Fantasy 14 blog post. I have most of it written. I just need to put some finishing touches on it and get it sent off to the Lodestone and on Twitter. So I gotta get that squared away, and then um, I still have laundry I have to do. It's that time of the week again, so I gotta get my clothes down in the laundry room before somebody else gets in there and hogs the whole freaking room so gotta get down there before they do but um aside from that though hey thanks a lot for dropping in and hanging out with me everybody i appreciate that and um i should be on later on this evening between 4 to 6 p.m u.s central time and i believe i will be streaming darkest dungeon but until then thanks for coming everybody see y'all next time